Hello everyone. Now I come back again in continuation of trigonometry. We will be doing something here. In last session, I mentioned that please start taking angles in radians. And same way, in addition to that, I will be saying something again that whatever you have learned in trigonometry in previous classes, please unlearn those things for some time. Why do I say so? Because you have already done something in previous class which was regarding or which was in context of a right triangle that you were taught sine theta, cos theta, tan theta, etc. Those trigonometric ratios with help of a right triangle where your theta was always between 0 degree and 90 degree. And you have seen tables also where below 0 degree sine and corresponding value was written or maybe like below 180 degree some value of sine or cos was written. Realize this that if you start with right triangle and if you continue to do so, your theta would always remain between 0 degree and 90 degree, which may not be the case because that gives you a wrong impression that sine theta and cos theta as if they are not valid quantities for theta beyond 90 degrees. So in this session, my emphasis would be only on that theta can be beyond 90 degree also. Now I'm saying degree, soon I will be starting in radians. So to do that, I start with first circular functions. Now name suggests that there has to be some circle involved here and function word is not new to you. That you have already seen. So let, us, let me not continue with function part. So here of course a circle is required. So I start with a unit circle. I draw x axis, y axis and origin I keep as the center. Mind you please in coordinate geometry, if you are taking a circle, you have to specify that what is the radius and what is the center. Center is at the origin and radius I have written there, unit radius. Unit radius means one. Now, if you have drawn a circle, say with 5 centimeter radius or 5 inches radius, somewhere you have to write at the corner that what unit you have taken, that 5 centimeter or 5 inches, whatever is the radius, that you will be taking as one unit. So, further all calculation or all lengths, they would be measured in terms of units and not in terms of centimeter or inches. That is what I mean by unit radius. Now, let us go further. I say that these four positions, P, P dash, Q, Q dash, are important to me. Why? Because radius I have taken as 1. So correspondingly I have given those coordinates. Now what I say is that I take a point A which is moving point on the circle and that OA makes angle theta with positive x-axis in anti-clockwise direction that movement you could see and that theta is important to me. I say x coordinate of position A is cos theta and y coordinate of position A would be sin theta. Mind you please, this is definition of cos theta and sin theta. Here onwards, we are not going to take this right triangle concept. We have to go by this, that x coordinate of point A would be called cos theta and y coordinate would be called as sin theta. Now this unit circle is actually, I should say, heart of trigonometry. If you can start seeing things on this unit circle, this is of great help. But mind you please, you have to remember this first definition that x coordinate is cos theta and y coordinate is sin theta. And what is theta? Theta is the angle what OA makes with x axis, positive x axis in anticlockwise direction. These things, if we keep in mind, we can proceed further. Now, I make certain observations from this unit circle. My first observation is that I am saying theta is measured positive if point A is moving in anti-clockwise direction. So obviously you will ask, then can theta be negative also? Yes, we do have theta negative. And that negative angle would be measured in clockwise direction. So point A can move in anti-clockwise direction also or point A can move in clockwise direction also. Now, next thing what I say is that cos theta and sin theta are defined for all theta and theta belongs to R. Now, this is a general statement. Understand one thing that how do I say theta belongs to R? I just now mentioned that theta is positive, theta is negative, fine. But then do that exercise mentally that if point A starts moving from point P, then it completes one circle means 2 pi radians, means 360 degrees. So point A starting from P can arrive at point P. 
means it has taken complete circle and corresponding theta is 2 pi radians. Now, we do not stop that point A to go further. It can take second circle also. Means corresponding angle, if it takes two circles, would be 4 pi radians. Three circles, it would be 6 pi radians and so on. That means angle A can be as big as you can think. Right? When I say big, I mean that you are increasing angle. Point is moving in anti-clockwise direction. Means angle increases and it is taking all possible positive values. If point P and point A coincide, then corresponding theta would be 0. Again, point P is given to be 1 comma 0. Means its coordinates are known to me. What is x coordinate? That is cos theta. What is theta there? If A is at P, it is 0. Means cos 0 is known to me. Cos theta for any positive theta is known to me. Now, will it not actually prompt you that can we have cos theta for negative theta also? And take that upper point. I have mentioned that theta negative would be in clockwise direction. So, if you allow point A to move in clockwise direction and you arrive at some point, that point's x coordinate would work for corresponding theta but with negative value of theta. And that x coordinate is cos of that angle. So, realize this that cos of negative angles of theta cos of positive angles of theta and cos of zero. All you can find out means cos theta is a well-defined quantity for theta belongs to R. Similarly, if you keep concentrating on y coordinate and if you do the similar exercise again, you will realize that sine theta also is defined for all theta belonging to R. Negative theta, positive theta and theta equal to zero. Now also, something needs to be seen there. That point P is the farthest position from O. It has maximum x coordinate. As point P moves towards Q on the circle, its distance from the y axis decreases, means basically x coordinate decreases. And finally, it becomes 0 when it reaches to position Q. Now, x coordinate is positive, but less than 1 throughout. Obviously, on the left side of y axis, x coordinate is negative only. And Q dash P, if you see that arc, all the points on that arc even will have x coordinate less than 1. So, point P will have maximum x coordinate. This much you can see from the figure. And similarly, I can say P dash will have the lowest or least x coordinate. So, this is important for making me next observation. I say point P and P dash have the greatest and lowest abscissae. And similarly, point Q and Q dash, they have greatest and lowest ordinates. Ordinates means y coordinate. Now, with the help of this, I would write something about cos theta and sin theta. Abscissa means x coordinate. x coordinate means cos theta. I am saying cos theta's maximum value can be 1. And cos theta's minimum value is minus 1. And that leads to cos theta lies between minus 1 and 1. Mind you, please, I have written equality there. That means equality is a possibility. When does equality occur? I mean, you are a mathematics student. You must see equality sign and think immediately that when does equality occur? Equality means when cos theta is equal to 1. That happens at position P. And position P was the initial position of A from where point A starts moving in anticlockwise direction. Means theta can be 0. If A completes the circle and again arrives at position P, means angle correspondingly would be 2 pi. Again, it takes one circle and arrives at point P, means it is 4 pi. That means position P, where cos theta is 1, happens whenever theta is an even multiple of pi. That is what I can see. My meaning is that cos theta equal to 1, this is a possibility and hence I can say maximum value of cos theta is 1 in the given circumstances and minus 1 would be the minimum value. And similarly, about position Q and Q dash, if you concentrate, you can do this similar exercise and you can mention that maximum value of sine theta would be 1 and that occurs at position Q and minimum value of sine theta occurs at Q dash. Now, let us move further from here and make some more quick observations. I also realize that positions P, P dash, and q, q dash are important to me. Just now I mentioned position p occurs when it is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, etc. Similarly, if you do that exercise in clockwise direction, minus 2 pi, minus 4 pi also will appear. 
So realize this position P occurs whenever E1 multiple of pi is the value of angle theta. Now similarly, I can talk about P dash also. If you move from P to P dash first, that is semicircle, means 180 degree, means pi radians. And one thing I understood that if I do not want to leave that position, I have to add constantly 2 pi to it. Means pi, 3 pi, 5 pi. These would be the angles at corresponding position P dash. Also, had I come in the clockwise direction from P to P dash, angle would have been minus pi. And again, you can continue that exercise in clockwise direction and you will understand that minus pi, minus 3 pi, minus 5, 5 pi also appear at position P dash. And hence, position P dash occurs whenever angle is odd multiple of pi. Now, these are extremely important results. Please pay attention and keep noting them down somewhere. Now, also position Q appears when from position P to Q point A reaches. Means first quarter circle means 90 degree, means pi by 2. If you add 2 and pi to it, 2 and pi means E1 multiple of pi. 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi. Now, if you keep adding 2 pi to pi by 2, you will be at position Q only. Realize this. That means position Q appears whenever angle theta is 2 and pi plus pi by 2. And now from P to Q dash, if you come down, down means you are going in clockwise direction. And that tells me I can also say that as 2 and pi minus pi by 2 for position Q dash. So 2 and pi minus pi by 2 is the corresponding angle for position Q dash. So these four positions are extremely important. I can make some more observations from this unit circle. And that I would say as properties of sine and cosine function. Cosine means cos. The first property what I observe is sine 2 and pi plus theta is same as sine theta. Whenever you add even multiple of pi to angle theta, your position does not change. And one position means only one y coordinate. So you may call it sine theta or you may call it sine 2 and pi plus theta. Similarly for cos also because x coordinate also does not change. Cos theta and cos 2 and pi plus theta would be same. Now this property is called periodicity of sine and cosine functions. Also, I move further and some quick observations I make. Position P corresponds to even multiple of pi and their x coordinate is 1. So, cos 2 and pi is 1. Also, 2 and pi plus pi by 2 is position Q. Their sine of that angle is 1. So, sine 2 and pi plus pi by 2 is 1. Now, cos of 2 and plus 1 into pi by 2 means odd multiple of pi by 2. Odd multiple of pi by 2 position is Q and Q dash. And hence, cosine of that angle would be 0. Sin n pi is 0 because position P corresponds to even multiple of pi. Position P dash corresponds to odd multiple of pi. And at both the positions, y coordinate is 0. Means for any multiple of pi, even or odd, sin theta would be always 0. Now, 2 n pi minus pi by 2, that is the position Q dash. And there, y coordinate is minus 1. So, sin of 2 n pi minus pi by 2 is minus 1. And cos of 2 n plus 1 into pi means odd multiple of pi. Where does odd multiple of pi come? At position p dash and there cosine is minus 1. And before I come with something new in next session, please revise these things carefully. Then only you would be enjoying the next session. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you.